tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high. The sky is all shadowed with darkness, no shelter or help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish, how canst thou lie? Each moment so mildly is threatening, a breath in the upgrading. The winds and the waves shall obey my will. Peace, peace, be still. Be still. Whether the wrath of the storm to see, or demons of men, or whatever it be, the water Swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and of the skies. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Peace, peace, be still. Master with anguish of spirit, I bow in my grief today. The depths of my son heart are troubled, awaken and save, I pray. Torrents of sin and of anguish sweep all my sinking soul. And I perish, I perish, dear master, oh, hasten and take control. The winds and the waves shall obey my will, be still, be still, be still. Whether the wrath of the storm to see, or demons or men, or whatever it be, no water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Oh, dear. 
demons of men or whatever it be. No water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and of the skies. The eyes shall simply open my will. Peace be still, peace be still. The eyes shall simply open my will. Peace, peace be still. All shall simply obey my will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all shall simply obey my will. Peace, peace, be still.
So we hope that you will join in the celebration in the, the music, uh, but we need to keep wearing our masks. Uh, you will uh, hear the ancient, but we trust to relevant and comforting words of scripture, uh, tributes, uh, and uh, when it comes time for communion, uh, if you're a baptized believer from any denomination of any age, or if you are moved through this sacrament, through this service, to come and receive a sign of Christ's love and forgiveness, you're welcome to receive communion even if you're not baptized. If this is a moment of faith for your repentance and faith, you're welcome to receive communion. So when that takes place, we would invite you to come forward and, and come on either side of the casket. And uh, at the point uh, when you come forward, there's hand sanitizer. We do ask you to just put a little hand sanitizer on the hand. Uh, and then when it comes time, um, Associate uh, David or myself will administer the, uh, a wafer of bread into your hands, but don't touch you, uh, into your hands. And at that point, uh, you could administer the bread to yourself and then uh, head back to the pew. Uh, you might wish to hand sanitize again on the way back. Hope that's not too confusing for you, but you're welcome to receive uh, communion. Uh, at the end of the service, we'll be heading directly uh, to the Thornton Cemetery uh, in Oshawa at uh, 1200 Thornton Road North. Uh, and I think the information is in the program. I hope you have a copy of the program so that you can follow along or you can send your phone with the email to you. Uh, memorial donations may be made to, to Christ Church, and uh, you can find the information about that in the program or our website, ChristChurchOshawa.ca, um, where there are ways to, uh, to donate. If you need to use the washroom, there are washrooms just through the doors to the left, and also through this side door, uh, there's an accessible washroom uh, in the parish hall, the upper hall, uh, if you need to use the washroom. So, with uh, those uh, words of welcome, hope that you feel welcome uh, here, and uh, there's some people still arriving and uh, tuning in. Green book. There might be a green book just in the pew rack ahead of you. We'll be using that for the Eucharist, and uh, if you have access to that, just make sure that, uh, that you can uh, find that, and uh, we'll be on. Uh, uh, I'll tell you the page number later, but it's uh, the viewer service of the funeral, and uh, it will be 578. For those people who are anxious because they don't know what's happening, 578 will be the page uh, in the green book. Seated and uh, uh, ready to go. My name is Pastor Kit, AIT, Pastor Kit, and I've been the pastor here for four years and had the great privilege of knowing Fred as, uh, as his pastor for this year's entry. So, uh, we shall begin with uh, an opening prayer. Which, if you'd like to follow along, is on 577.
Please stand for the gospel reading. The Lord be with you. I am with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house 
are many rooms. If it were not so, would I, would I have told you I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. And that you may be where I am. And you know the way to the place that I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Please be seated. The wisdom of Ecclesiastes tells us that there's a time and a season for everything under God's heaven. Karina and Fred shared a season of joy for nearly five years. We'll hear more about that in just a moment from a tribute from our associate priest, Pastor David Reed, who performed the wedding ceremony. So we'll be looking forward to that. But this source of joy has a deeper root and longer effect than simply those five years. As David said in his read, our associate said in a funeral homily earlier this week for another saint of the parish who passed, uh, he said in his homily, you can't talk about life without talking about death. And as a believer, you can't talk about life and you can't talk about death without talking about Jesus. As someone said, Jesus is God with skin on. Jesus has a foot in both worlds, who came from heaven to earth, as the song goes, to show us the way from the earth to the cross, our debts to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Time for everything under heaven. Roger Whitaker sang a song back in the 1970s that the first time that we say hello began our last goodbye. There's a time and a season for everything. Celebrating the highs and weathering the storms and everything in turn. Whenever I saw Fred in church, or shaking hands after church in the four years I have been here as his pastor, this quiet-spoken man shone with a genuine faith, a warmth, accepting the gift of that brief moment and bowing to his pastor. I have benefited by such humility and faith, a season of blessing and joy for all who knew Uncle Fred. From the reading from the letter to the Corinthians, Paul recognizes the legitimate sadness that human loss causes, that grief is real, and yet we live with another reality, the reality of the physical resurrection of Jesus from the dead that signals a new beginning for all of creation. Time and seasons that people believed in the secular world revolve simply around the solar system in an industry of enlightenment marked by the moon, the sun, and mathematical formula. In the resurrection, it has been acknowledged that the world of creation revolves around Jesus. Where of death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, Paul writes. 
and the power of sin is the law. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't pretend to comprehend the whole mystery of the faith. But I embrace the victory of Christ's resurrection. Time is precious, like the few minutes I had with my granddaughter yesterday. Yet for a believer in the God of the resurrection from the dead, time will mean nothing in the next world. Refreshment awaits. Karina tells me that as a young man, Fred was conscripted, conscripted by the Nazis from his home in the Black Forest region of Germany to serve in the army of the Third Reich in the Second World War. At some point early on, he escaped, stripped off his army uniform, and fled. When he was in hospital just last week, he said to Karina that he wanted to get out of there too. In his confusion, laying in the merge, he said to Karina, Get me out of here. Let's elope. You could be my accomplice. What a sense of humor and love for his wife. A man of courage. Finally, from John's Gospel, we read of Jesus' comforting words to his disciples about preparing a place for them. Doing with any loving hospitals. There's nothing quite like clean sheets. You know the smell and feel of crisp white linen or multicolored sheets? I don't know what you've got on your bed. Whatever you prefer, but neatly adorned your bed. Like spring, fresh hope and rest. The first disciples in Jesus' empty tomb found the linens. They didn't find his body, but they found the linens that had been wrapped, that had been wrapped. where were they? But neatly folded in the tomb. Maybe he was just practicing folding linens to get ready to do it. Clean sheets, towels, a cleansed life where there is no more sorrow or sickness. Clean heart time, but the Creator saved God. By his wounds we are healed and cleaned up. A transfer of humanity's sinful ways to God's holy ways. The way we were meant to live. Only God with skin on him could have accomplished such a monumental task for us to repent and be restored. By his brokenness we are made whole, pure and holy. Cleansing was done on the cross, and yet we are just begun. I don't know for you, but I'm not perfect. I need to keep my eyes on the Lord so that I go on in being filled with the Spirit and following that his way of perfection. So being confronted with such self-sacrifice from an innocent man who inspired Isaiah to write, Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and draw near. These words comfort us, but also confront us with ourselves and bring us to our knees and sometimes to tears or to praise and helps keep our eyes on him who loved us even before we knew him. The one who prepares a room and sees me through all the seasons of my life and knows how much I'll enjoy the clean sheets of the next life. Home to glory, home to Jesus. So now we get to sing it loud. As if we were at the highest height of Sierra Leone. Mount, I'm not going to say this correctly, Mount Bintumani? Mount Bintumami, but the highest peak in Sierra Leone, 1,945 meters, that's very tall. It rises above Loma Mountains, and its lower slopes are covered in rainforests, home to a wide variety of animals. These include pygmy hippopotamuses, dwarf crocodiles, rufous fishing owls, and numerous primates. Heaven, you see, is our free town. We join with Fred and with those who have gone to glory before us in praising and worshiping the living God who gave himself for us. Hallelujah. And all God's people said. Hallelujah.
musical tribute.
I'm the husband of Angelina Thompson, and she was Uncle Fred's niece. Um, Angelina, first of all, on behalf of Angelina and myself, uh, our condolences to all the loss of Uncle Fred. As Femi knows, um, Angelina had a back issue a few days ago, and unfortunately, she's bedridden and unable to be here today. So, what we are now going to do is she is going to do two readings from her bed, and I am going to allow you to hear it through the phone. So, thank you for your patience with this, and um, without anything further, I'm now going to allow Angelina to take the mic. Angelina, are you ready? Yes. Go ahead. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Very well, resounding.
1954. They had a child in 1954 and called her Louise. One year later, his new wife had a fatal accident. In 1959, Fred remarried a lady from former British Diana, Letitia Fair, known to all as I.B. They adopted two babies, David and Shelley. David died at a tender age of 16 years old due to cancer. Fred was born in a Roman Catholic church. In Canada, he went to church with his wife, Arlene, a Roman Catholic. He later, in, in later life, he became an atheist for a short time. Because of his wife, Arlene, and other circumstances, he became born again, a Christian. Later in, in life, his wife became very ill, and after a long suffering, went home to her maker in 2016. Fred was devastated and his pain got worse. In his own words, it felt like hell on earth for him when he saw his wife suffering. The suffering continued in Fred's own words, and then God led him shortly to a lady from West Africa. Fred had no intention to remarry, but God had other plans for him. Fred fell in love with his blind lady and got married in September 2017. Her name is Karina Ogami. This marriage in Fred's own words was filled with love and peace and a meaning full of life. And it was based on certain that four times in his life. God allowed him to live to a ripe old age of 92 years old before being united with his maker. May he rest in peace. And that's what he wrote himself. Thank you. Thank you, Angelina. Uh, we miss your presence, but your words have actually helped us so much here to understand a little more about Uncle Fred. Thank you for doing so. Thank you all for allowing us to do this this way uh, and achieve this. Just the traditional climate age, he was 
who was well along in years, and, uh, and uh, she's mature woman herself. So uh, she was, I wanted to know what that would be like to uh, listen to that invitation. And she said, in life, you have to take chances. And to delay was going to be dangerous. She can't put it off very long. Just so I took the chance, and I never regretted it. Yeah. There's wisdom in that. I'm going to just give you a snippet of that first letter. It was written after the wedding, uh, uh, not, not too long after the wedding, and she and he wanted me to know a little bit about his life around his marriage. So I just want to pick a few snippets out. He was born, as you know, in Bradford, Germany. Came to Canada. He uh, married uh, earlier in life as a, as a young man. And after uh, uh, many years together, she, uh, she passed away from a lengthy illness. And, and he said something about this first marriage. He said, we got married in a non-Catholic church in Montreal. His fiancée picked the church to get married, and the, you can imagine this is back a long time ago. The pastor advised against an interracial marriage, even though this happened in the Old Testament. He knew his Bible on that one. So he said, I then suggested to the minister uh, that we would get married in another church. The pastor changed his mind quickly, and we got married in his church. Uh, we were young. My fiance made all the arrangements. Uh, there was no guidance or advice given by the church as to how to organize the wedding. Uh, well, we got married, and our marriage was very pleased, happy. We it was blessed, and I was very happy. All my life, but all my life, I was very disappointed that there was no music at our wedding day at the church. Not even a recorded one. It did nag me all of my life, bold and underlined all. So he got a lot of that one for a while. And so I hear people say, God is great. Well, he is. When I met Karina from West Africa, something wonderful happened. She made the arrangements to get married at your church. And uh, God is, I need to go ahead. And God is good indeed. Thanks be to God that you married us. Not only was there music, but organ music, <laughs> singing, and flowers, the whole nine yards. I was in heaven. <laughs> and now comes the icing on the cake. I call my wife the Queen from Africa. <laughs> I didn't have to ask you to do that. <laughs> we get along just fine. Love brings heaven down to earth. I am. May God be always at your side and always protect you. That was so wonderful. Thank you for that. Everyone, see that little sitcom, everybody, everyone loves Raymond? Everyone seems to love Fred. He's the ones I run into. He was welcomed and he was loved immediately in the Syrian community. He was called up a friend. Uh, and it says that there was a, a little girl that, that uh, probably because she hadn't seen many, many white people, she called him Santa. <laughs> <laughs> the friend always gave Karina special birthday and Christmas cards with such loving notes on each. And she said she's kept all of them and sometimes read them over. And a great sense of humor. You'll hear that in a moment. And he had jokes on his sleeve. <laughs> and he told her from the beginning, this is quite a vow, after your regular vows, wherever you go, I'll come along with you 
including grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Ruth in the Old Testament, where you go and you go out and go, you're not looking by God, you're looking by people. Green Act, he says, I'm And by the way, uh, uh, every uh, week, uh, Thursday, I think, at the afternoon, I think, uh, Doris Croft from our parish uh, has had a, uh, a Bible study on Thursdays, I think. And it was a women's group Bible study. And Fred went right along with her. Only <laughs> <laughs> at home. No problem. Uh, that's a guy whose masculinity wasn't threatened by being surrounded by He would say, you don't have to have money to be good to people. And from everything that I've heard, he was a generous, a generous man, both in his heart and in his relationships with others. Just a word about his faith. You've heard about it here. And many of you know it, know how deep it was. He was brought up in the Catholic Church in the Black Forest of Germany. Uh, he, he has some very tough stories to tell of, of the Second World War. But somewhere in his, in his life, he began to read the Bible, I'm curious about it. He fell in love, especially with the New Testament and its stories. He loved the stories. And he said, he said this, these words to me, I found what I was looking for. So he was on a hunt to find something bigger and better than he had. So Fred's gift for sales soon extended to his faith. He was always looking to let people know that there's good news for them. And he wrote articles, which Priya tells me that she only discovered after the past. He had messages from Jesus on his coffee cups. And you got to know his email address was Live by the word at gmail.com. You know what this that way. Live by the word at gmail.com. And you all know his license plate, which right up there memorial to him. Jesus for me. You can't ask for a better advertisement than that. So I'm going to finish. With the second piece that he sent to me. And it's titled, Thanks Be to God, It's Not Too Late to Change. This is Fred's witness. See, what you believe matters. This is the of just parts of it. What you believe matters, not only for yourself, but it shapes the world around you. What you believe influences your whole life. What is worse, to tell a lie or to believe a lie? Now, did Jesus Christ go to Nazareth, go to the cross and suffer? In agony for nothing, question mark, question mark, question mark. He turned water into wine in seconds. He walked on water. He healed leprosy instantly. He expelled demon spirits on the spot. He returned a dead body back to life. He died on the cross and came back to life. He ascended in his body to join his Father in heaven. Follow his teaching. It enriches your life and that of others. He said, the Bible has the right answer. I read it, I read in it first thing in the morning, even if only a few lines. It's enriched my life and the life of others. I love to put God first. Amen. How often do you like actually begrudgingly put God first? It's because you're guilty to not do it. But you love to put God first. It has enriched my life. So we are surrounded by unseen Evil beings that lead us astray. Don't let this happen. You seek the truth. Who are your friends? It does not matter. It does, it does matter. Sorry. If everybody is doing it, it does not make it right. And so here it comes. Another piece of it's here. There were two brothers in a smaller town. Both were known to be crooks and swimmers, in and out of jail. One of the brothers died suddenly. The surviving brother said to the pastor, you have to say at the funeral that my deceased brother was a saint. After a pause, the pastor said, I will say it. So here comes the eulogy of the pastor. The pastor said about the deceased this. 
He was a crook, a thief, a swindler, in and out of jail, and nobody liked him. But compared to his brother, he was a saint. <laughs> Please don't fall into this trap. The Bible is true and false. There's nothing better than the Bible. It's not only what you know, but also what we know. It makes all the difference. Friend, live by the word at gmail.com. My mother, I, my father died when I was seven. My mother was middle aged. And after a number of years, a gentleman uh, pursued her and asked her to bury him. And when she did, I remember her later describing it. They were both pushing beyond the middle age. And she said, I thought we will have a few good years together. And I want to say to you, Karina, Karina, you and Fred have had a few very good very wonderful, very loving years together. And they were beautiful, I know that. They were blessed, and they're full of memories that you will now carry for the rest of your life.
the hope of resurrection, and promise of eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the name of Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the name of Christ. You may wish to sit for me all. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, and calling Israel to be your people, in your word, spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and then he had given thanks. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this hand. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer, top of page, on page 583, 4. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our years, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
in number five of Mark 11.
five elements today <coughs> to share this one last birthday with him. I wish to say thank you and thank you. On behalf of the family of Kuku Fred, as he's fondly called, <coughs> we want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to all who have <coughs> spared their time today to be here. Losing a loved one is always a difficult, painful, and stressful time. No amount of money can ever buy comfort. <coughs> But your presence here today is invaluable and more than any currency. And the family and the family appreciates the gesture. Grieving the family means they are not grieving alone. We will always have a shoulder to give them. Thank you for all the donations and gifts during this time. The family is overwhelmed and pray that your kindness will be rewarded tenfold. The family wishes to extend special thanks to Christ Memorial Church for looking after him during his life and on this day. We wish to extend sincere thanks and appreciation to the officiating clergy, the organists, the staff of Fountain Road Funeral Services, and all those who in various ways have sacrificed their time to honor and fulfill from all over Canada, USA, England, and the rest of the world. I used to say that I'm preferred is a global citizen. For the brief time that I worked to know him in less than five years, I'm preferred extended um, a kind, tender touch to all the people that come in contact with him. And for this turnout, on a day like this, during the pandemic, it showed that we felt that touched all of us. So I want to finally say thank you, and I wish that um, our coming and our exit from this earth will be as rewarding and as blessed as we feel it's happening to be. We will feel we always come to every phone call with thank you so much. Sorry, we are just a brief announcement that after the interment at the um, funeral site, there will be a um, the reception repast after at the Caribbean Cultural Center, 600 Wentworth Street East, Oshawa. We hope to see all of us there. Thank you. Thank you. Lift together, okay? You got, you got it? Okay. Proceed forward. Yep. You, O oh Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed in your 
righteousness deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and say, Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall always be of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Okay, feed that one through. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May Fred's soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the God of mercy transform you by his grace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sleep on, 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 Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. From east I slow back, and then you can sleep, for thou shalt win no more to toil and weep. Thy knees are perfect, rest secure and sleep. Good night, good night, good night, sleep and secure, rest. Good night, good night, good night. Until the shadows from this other pass. Until he gathers in his hands and blows, until that swamp lies on the roof of us. Good night, good night, good night, sleep and take your rest. Good night, good night, good night. Until they despair. Until the dead in Jesus shall arise, and he shall come, but not in lowly guise. Good night, good night, good night. Good night. And take your rest. Good night, good night, good night. Good night, Good night, good night, good night. Okay, at this point, I'm going to need everybody to move down this way. We'll get the vault lid placed onto the vault, okay? And then we'll have to have everybody move back to the roadside so the equipment can come in and lower the vault into the ground, okay? <laughs> yeah, so you just, just need to do it for the safety of the roadside, okay? Or into your car, because your car is nice and close. Okay? Yeah. Oh, are you not a host? Huh? Me? Yes. I, I make you host, yes. <laughs> you me, me. Oh, you don't know. Oh, so I you <laughs> You left? I, I just left. And you're done. Yes, yes, I know. You don't end for all, man. You don't end the meeting. You don't tell me. I know. Thanks, Theo. Yes, sir. Let me give you my. Great to meet you, and I really yes. appreciate you singing yes. and your playing the drums. Yes. Good. Let me bring you your. Yes. I'm going to stay for a second. With me? Yeah, let me just get in here. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Yes. Yeah.